as we get ready to celebrate our nation's independence, we're coming your way from Philadelphia, where the Pirates begin a two-city, seven-game road trip. It's the Pirates and their cross-state rivals, the Philadelphia Phillies, the first of a four-game series. Greg Brown, Bob Walk, along with Robbie and Smikowski. Glad you could be with us, and we're really glad to see the guy back in the starting lineup for the Pirates. Their catcher, Francisco Cervelli, comes off the disabled list today, and he's in that starting lineup tonight, Bob. Yeah, very glad to see him back, Greg, because I think he brings a, a, a complete package uh, to that catching position. There's something that the other two guys don't really do as far as the complete package. He can contribute a great deal on offense. He can be that veteran presence out there, the, the field commander, so to speak, and also also, he knows our pitching staff very well, so he really brings a lot to the table. Uh, very happy to see him back there again. And happy to see a guy get another Player of the Month award for the fifth time in his career. Andrew McCutcheon, very well deserving our Barrel Automotive leader stat in the month of June. He was among the league leaders in just about every offensive category. Yeah, he's really done a, a great job since uh, since he stepped through the door as a young rookie. He's always been the guy everybody rallies around and it's happened again this year. He was struggling. The offense was really struggling. He turned it on last month. Offense started getting better, but that has to continue. Kutch needs to keep this going on through the second half. Maybe not hit 411, but keep going the way he is and keep this offense going because we need to score more runs. Fifth player of the month award. He also made five all-star teams. Well, Josh Harrison trying to catch up. Announced yesterday he's made his second all-star team. Well, uh, Jay Hay always believed in himself. Uh, he had the goal not only to be just a bench player, a utility guy. He knew when he got here he wanted to be an everyday player. He was able to prove that he did that, and uh, now he is a two-time all-star. I mean, he is really, I think, uh, put all the, the naysayers to bed. And a guy that uh, has some all-star worthy numbers is on the mound for the Pirates tonight looking to get the Buccos a W. We're talking about of course Ivan Nova Supernova and the Pirates take on the Phillies coming up next. Allegheny Health Network, the largest health system rated number one in the region for all the things that matter most.
by Bordis and Bordis, official legal partner of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and by Kenny Ross Subaru, total confidence pricing. Let's go, Bucks! Now it's a Nola Nova matchup here in Philly. Aaron Nola, second time he's faced the Pirates this season, and he can be awfully tough. Matchup of the Pirates and the Phillies. The Commonwealth Cup on the line. This four game series. And the RAV4 starting lineup out will be Adam Frazier for the Pirates, Josh Harrison, Andrew McCutcheon, Josh Bell will hit cleanup. The last five road games, five out of 18 with a couple of home runs. David Freeze will follow. Gregory Polanco hits sixth, and there is that name again back in the lineup Francisco Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, Ivan Nova for the Bucks. Aaron Nola's the numbers when you look at him it's like nothing really jumps out at you like great but everything is OK. Not bad either. You look at the uh, the innings pitched up in 11 games the home runs eight especially in this ballpark. It's not a horrible number walks and K's are kind of in line and opponent batting average at 250 kind of a middle of the road number there. So Nola is uh, pretty good. Nothing outstanding but pretty darn good when you look at those numbers. Josh Harrison will be heading to Miami next week for the Midsummer Classic. Second time he has made the All-Star team. We check out the Honda defense for the Philadelphia Phillies. And Nick Williams just recently called up for the minor leagues in right. Rudabel Herrera in center, Daniel Nava in left, Michael Franco, Tommy Joseph on the corners, Freddy Galvis, Andres Blanco, in the middle of the infield, and Cameron Rupp is behind the plate for Aaron Nola. Again, Nola's second appearance of the year against Pittsburgh. And underway, ball one on Adam Frazier. And Nola, 24 years old from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Frazier with three home runs and 28 runs batted in on the year. Check swing. Nola drafted in the first round three years ago out of LSU. Seventh pick overall that season. Spent some time on the DL this year with a Lower back strain. And behind home plate, calling the balls and strikes is Chad Fairchild. At first base, Ryan Blakeney. Crew chief at second, Larry Vanover. Alfonso Marquez at third. 3 1 count. 22 walks, 64 strikeouts for Nola on the year. And a leadoff walk. Get things going here right away. Nola start against the Pirates back on May 21st. Two walks in seven innings. Four hits, one run. That's one of the, uh, the things uh, we need to take better advantage of that San Francisco series, the base on ball. See if we can do that right here. Well, you can say that again. One thing we need to do, uh, especially in that San Francisco series, is we need to take advantage of the uh, the base on balls. Let's see if we can do that right here. Uh, I didn't mean it literally, but oh, thank you. I strike is called. Mike was off or something, so I said it again. Yeah, the uh, the Saturday game, especially, ten Pirates walked. And they lost in 11 innings, 2-1. So Josh Harrison. Very disappointing homestand for the Pirates. No getting around that. And after winning two of three against a really good ball club, the Tampa Bay Rays, yeah, they were playing the Giants despite the fact that the Giants had uh, swept the Rockies before coming to Pittsburgh. And no really defending getting swept in a three game series by a team with 
fifty one losses now second most to the Phillies. Nice start by Trevor Williams yesterday. Was blanking the Giants. Into the seventh inning then a leadoff walk and a double he was pulled and uh, the bullpen. Give up the runs. Oh and two on the all star Josh Harrison. Might want to see uh, the Pirates don't push the running game. Nola has had trouble the last couple of years. Opponents have been running at will against him. A strike out of Jay Head. He's got that big leg kick, so he'll give you a decent jump. Opponents have been 12 of 13 successful against Nola on the bases, but Jay Hay goes down on strikes. He had the day off yesterday after his 0 for 6 on Saturday. It looks like on that one he was just trying to really wait as long as he could. He didn't want to chase a bad pitch. Want to go after the curveball. Waited too long, got the ball thrown by him. Another player of the month award for Andrew McCutcheon. The fifth in his career. The only other active player has won the National League uh, Player of the Month award five or more times. Albert Pujols won it six times while with the Cardinals. Grab. One hand. I think he's in the sunfield over there. So. Yeah. Looking out that direction uh, from that side of the stands, you're looking right into the setting sun. And concern with Frazier. In the plate, the catcher Cameron Rupp. Frazier has five steals, caught four times. Now we know what their pickoff sign is. Yeah. A little the shake of an open hand and a little flick of the thumb. That's been a curveball for about 150 years. There goes Frazier. Oh, yeah. McCutcheon swings and misses, but Frazier has the steal. What you want to run on that hook. And that is exactly why you see those guys when they're taking their leads, you see them peeking in toward the catcher. So if they can see that two go down, they know they've got a curveball coming and that's their best chance of stealing second. Chance early here for the Pirates against Aaron Nola. A uh, slow. Yeah, kind of a casual Chad Fairchild ring up. Strike three call. Definitely a not Dutch runner. <laughs> that, that's as late as a call I think I've ever seen. Uh, looks at it. Stands, stands up. Stands up. Tim McClellan then, like. And then gives a little pump. Now he may be. Man, yeah. We just didn't hear right, him. He right. may be hollering strike three during all of that so that the players know what's going on. Josh Bell now with two outs.
Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, Bell cracks one, and uh, Nova Nola. You know what uh, Mr. Blass said? V stands for victory, and we know what L stands for loss. Been that way for about 150 years. There's a That's line drive to right. Catch made. And it'll be that way tonight. We watch and see. Nola doesn't crack just yet. Half inning. Pirates nothing. And the Phillies coming to bat. Phillies coming to bat against Ivan Nova. The Phillies are 27 and 53 on the year, and Pete McCannon's lineup has Daniel Nava leading off, Freddie Galvis to follow, Michael Franco is at third base, Tommy Joseph hits clean up with Nick Williams, the rookie now in right field. Andres Blanco is at second. Odubel Herrera is a 353 career hitter against the Pirates. He bats seventh. Cameron Ruff, Aaron Nola. Nova's second start this season against the Phillies. Vaughn's numbers are all store uh, like, but did not get the nod. Well, practice glove, had to go get another one. <laughs> so it's a Nova Nava matchup here to start things. Nova against Daniel Nava, Francisco Cervelli back behind the dish. It's a tough one here. A couple of V's. Switch hitter Nava way better from this side of the plate. 354 average and a 432 on base percentage number. As a left handed hitter for Daniel Nava. Nova did not go six innings his last time out for the first time all season. He went five against the Rays, gave up two runs on seven hits, got the win. The Pirates beat Tampa Bay 6 2. Base hit to start things off. Another thing too about the Nova, and and this is just because the bar is set where it is, is that those walks are coming up a little yeah. bit. Now. You know, if normally anybody else you wouldn't even know notice it all, but with him, it kind of sticks out a little. Check out the defense behind Ivan Nova. David Freeze is at third base and already in on the grass. Jordy Mercer at short. Josh Harrison, Josh Bell on the right side of the infield. Frazier, McCutcheon, Polanco in the outfield, and Francisco Cervelli catches his buddy, Ivan Nova. Galvis drives one deep to right field. A no doubter for Freddie Galvis. His eighth 2 0 Phillies. 
in the strike zone down and in quarter. So many times uh, you see guys with that pitch that is are very quick to get to it. It's almost like you're just dropping the head of the bat down to the baseball. And it can really get there in a hurry and they can center it up. This is the one that uh, lefties, well, everybody likes it, but lefties kind of have that that reputation of eating up that pitch that's in that down and in quarter of the strike zone. Just crushed. That's the 12th allowed by Ivan Nova. Hey, no doubter. Michael Franco. With 10 homers. Good place to hit home runs in this ballpark. Phillies is 329 there down that line left field line foul ball three thirty down the right fairly deep center field but uh, regular you know to left and to right ball travels very well and gets out of here pretty easily. Something about the location because Veteran Stadium, which was a parking lot right next door, was an excellent hitter's ballpark, also. Kind of like um, Cincinnati. Yep. Same way. A snap hook curveball that normally you don't see uh, Nova throw, and Cervelli, you don't want to see him get popped in a mask like that. But he did. Similar looking pitch. Now three and two on Michael Franco. Yeah, that one got him right in the Rawlings label. Back to back pitches from Nova that were in the dirt and a line drive base hit for Franco. That was a bullet. Center, center. So three straight hits against Ivan Nova. Franco rips the 3 2 offering to left following the Freddie Galvis bomb. Here's Tommy Joseph, who has 14 home runs on the year and has driven in 42. That home run total, the team high. Joseph has also hit into 13 double plays. That's among the league leaders. Bucks beat the Phillies two out of three in Philadelphia. Freddie Galvis's home run has the Phillies on top early. Nova is not right control wise. Cervelli knows it. He's going to go out and talk to him. He's thrown so far 13 pitches. And about a quarter of them have bounced in the dirt. Nova 2 0, 180 ERA and three career starts against the Phillies, including that win back on May the 20th. He gave up three runs on eight hits and seven and a third. Franco aboard, still nobody out, and a 2 0 count on Tommy Joseph. Spanks that into the seats.
Joseph on their recent road trip hit just 188, but in eight games hit three homers, drove in seven runs. Phillies beat the Mets yesterday. There's a double play ball. Two outs. New team for Mercer, Harrison, and Bell. What a friend of the pitcher it is. I mean, a couple of pitches ago, it looked like you know, nobody was going to have issues here in this first inning. And then he's able to get just a, about as routine a double play ball as you can. Now, here is 23 year old Nick Williams. Made his major league debut in New York the other day collected his first career hit of Jacob deGrom tapped Nova going to continue to the bag and he'll get the ball from Bell and a 3 1 put out pretty Galvis hit it out to give the Phillies a 2 nothing lead. Shooter in infield single. Orlando Arcia goes from first to third, overslides third, so now he gets caught in a rundown, but eventually he'll get out of it. A little indecision at home plate. Arcia comes in to score. The Brewers win the series opener 8 to 1. Guys? Rob, thank you. And the Pirates who started the day, six back of Milwaukee, have to get the win tonight. Otherwise, you're going to start talking about the, the Reds passing them. Reds are in last place, but just a game and a half behind Pittsburgh. You see Ray Searage chatting with Ivan Nova. Here's David Freeze against Aaron Nola. A very important um, road trip as far as setting some kind of a tone. Yeah. Going into the All Star break, so decisions are going to be made. Quickly after the All-Star break is over in those two weeks leading up to the uh, trading deadline, about what's this team's future like this year? So if you have a strong road trip, maybe get a couple of games closer to the top going in there, then that uh, it looks like maybe the team is serious about you know, trying to uh, do something about this division in a down year for the division. to be a little bit of a sense of urgency here coming on in this month of July to start playing well and making making a move toward the top at least so six back right now yep well six and a half at this moment Gregory Polanco makes the strike
strike. Blanco was one for four yesterday. After his three hit performance on Saturday afternoon. Polanco started in center field yesterday. Lynn Hurdle gave uh, Andrew McCutcheon, Josh Harrison, David Freeze. Days off, strike is called. And it's one and two. McCutcheon, looks like uh, Adam Frazier is enjoying what Kutch has to say as Polanco lifts one to center. Two outs in the second. And our T-Mobile unlimited baseball break involves the, the players, the final vote candidates. You can go to MLB.com slash final vote. Elvis Andrews, Xander Bogarts, Didi Gregorius, Logan Morrison, Mike Moustakis, the American League players on that final vote. and. One of these five will also be going to the Midsummer Classic. Justin Bohr, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rendon, Mark Reynolds, and Justin Turner. Francisco Cervelli. Was on the seven day concussion DL. I was also fighting a uh, little bit of a virus, also, that kind of um, muddied the waters a little bit as to what was going on with him. The fact that he went to the 10 day DL. Yeah. And what's interesting is that. We talked to him. It's the first game back after the road trip. He said uh, he was fine. He was going to leave it up to the, the club, and then the club put him on the 10 day DL. One ball, two strikes. Strikeout. One, two, three. For the Bucks.
the bottom of the second inning and we're going to get to the Allegheny Health Network injury update involving veteran Howie Kendrick through 33 games hitting 349. Kendrick on the DL after straining his left hamstring a little less than a week ago. Scheduled to have an MRI today. Hopes it won't be too much longer. If he'd had enough at bats to qualify, he'd be a top in the National League batting race, Howie Kendrick. Andres Blanco getting a start at second base. Switch hitting veteran. Batting average of just 173. Pete McCannon replaced Ryan Sandberg at the end of June 2015. And then was named a uh, full time manager after the season. Received an extension this year in early May that'll take him through a next season big cut there from Blanco I know they gave up three straight hits then the double play by Tommy Joseph and the bouncer to the right side by Nick Williams another pitch well out in front of the plate in the dirt Eighth in the league in ERA coming in. 308 for Ivan Nova. Change up call. You know that, that pitch right there, Greg, that's another little red flag for me. He's not trying to throw a letter high change up. Nova just uh, now that doesn't mean. I mean, he, he's been around long enough. He can get control together. A hitter later. But right now, it's not very consistent at all. And he gets the bouncer to first. You one of these hats, Bob. It's a nice hat. What size is that? Do they get, does that come in a seven and a half? X X X X L. Oh, we're a seven and a half. That would uh, be it's a good, pillbox good, cap. Good rain hat. Popcorn hat. Another one. Yeah. There have been a handful of those pitches and now, in the dirt. And, and the thing, too, about that one, that was a first pitch curveball. That's not 0 2. 0 2, you know, you, you kind of snap one off there a little hard, and it's, it, you can understand that. But not first pitch. He's trying to get the first pitch strike there. But that is not like him at all. Odubel Herrera with five homers and 28 RBIs. Ball a strike. Herrera, we showed you at the outset, 16 games, 353 career hitter against the Pirates. He was two for 12 in the series in May. It is Game of Thrones night here. So. We've got the, their players on the scoreboard dressed up like characters. Base hit to right. Bob and our esteemed producer Adam Elmore went out to the, uh, the iron throne. sit in the Iron Throne. Yeah. It's more comfortable than I thought it would be. Really, those swords mashed up to make it. So you sat in that thing, huh? Yep, the Iron Throne. Was it pretty cool? Very cool. Wow. Yeah. No, did, it, did Adam like it? You felt so powerful. Yeah. When you were I mean, look how powerful that guy looks. Yeah. yeah very powerful. Let's see that. This is. Yeah. Lady, she's going to look powerful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 
Now you, I saw a picture. You weren't smiling like no, that. No, if you're going to be a king, you can't go up there like you're. That's the tourist look right there. Right. You got to sit like you're, you're in charge of something. Mm -hmm. Have that look on your face that no one's going to mess with you. Boy, you're I'll on see. the Iron Throne. No, I, Did anybody mess with you? It was just Adam and I. It was early in the day. Nobody was there. We had the Iron Throne talk. The throne room was empty. It was just us. We did whatever we wanted. So it didn't matter then how you looked. You were the only ones there, right? Yeah. Well. So Adam had the tourist look. Yeah, but we were taking pictures, so I wanted to make sure I had a good picture. Oh. What'd you do with the picture? It's uh, in the cloud somewhere. Rupp pops this up. Jay Hay. Second out. Quick little throw over to first base, just in case. So now you can uh, possibly get out of this inning as Aaron Nola comes to the plate. Aaron Nola is one for 18. This is start number 17 for Ivan Nova. Had an 18 at bats this season for Aaron Nola. Um, Ivan Nova has walked only 11 all season. In his 109, almost 110 innings of work, two of those 11 have been against pitchers, incredibly enough. I'm talking about perhaps the best control pitcher in all of baseball. Ivan Nova, two of the free passes have been against his bound opponents. One ball, one strike. Kind of wild that Nola has walked three times himself. Wait for it to come down. And on to first. So a one out single. Nothing across. Two nothing. Philadelphia leads it in Philly. Citizens Bank Park in South Philly. I'm Robbie Ants Mikowski. And guess what? It's Game of Thrones night here at the ballpark. And Greg and Bob, one of the perks of this gig, you just walk around with a camera and a microphone, and you just walk up and you sit right down in the Iron Throne. I don't have to battle for it. I don't have to fight for it. Not a bad gig, huh? 
How do I look? Well, I'm going to leave that up to you, Bob. Well, how did he look? He looked like pretty serious. Yeah, he had a little bit of a serious look on his face. I'll go with that. That's not bad. It looked like he could rule the world or the worlds, whatever it is. He's going to have some dragons at his back and call. Just be careful because I heard Dan Baker, their public address announcer, on the field say, Winter is coming. He warned everyone. Not yet. It's not. At least that's all you heard him say. Just coming from an authority. The voice. What's coming is the rest of July and a lot of hot weather. That's what's coming. Aaron Nola will face Jordy Mercer. He walked Adam Frazier to start the ball game, but he has set down the next six. He's used to this weather. Nola. Hot, muggy. He was in Seattle. His last start and he went seven innings struck out nine Mariners. There's strike one. Final strike on Jordy Mercer. Eighth home run of the season for him yesterday. Two run shot off Jeff Samarja on a breaking pitch. Third highest OPS among National League shortstops now for Jordy Mercer. Behind only all stars Zach Cozart and Corey Seeger. Another breaking pitch. Nola liking that curveball. Got a pretty good hook. Back with a fastball away, three and two. Curveball is his best pitch as far as not giving up hits. Change up in the fastball, get hit a lot more than his curveball does. Hard hit, but at the second baseman, and Andres Blanco drops it. Lead off air, his second of the season, and now Ivan Nova can try and bunt Mercer into scoring position. Didn't see a bad hop. Just kind of clanked that one. Maybe he used two hands, Greg. Still couldn't catch it. Good look on the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo at that error. Love the Super Mo. Anytime we have a play, when this is, what happened there? Is Super Mo always has the answer. Yeah. The 43rd error of the year for the Phillies, who came in to this ball game with the fourth fewest errors committed in the National League. Team ERA 480. Only the Mets and Reds with a higher team ERA. Team average of 243. Only the Cubs and Padres have a lower team batting average. There's Pete McCannon, one time Pirates coach, interim skipper, former Philly. Larry Boa, one of Bob's former teammates. Former fiery shortstop. Out here early this afternoon, hitting ground balls in the infielders. Loves his work. What a great. Uh, Shortstop he was. He's the bench coach for the Phils these days. He's done some managing in his career. Mm -hmm. Nova, uh, pretty good in, in this department, but uh, it's a, now a 2 2 count. Is he kind of stabbed at that one? Boy, 
They sure did, didn't they? Tied for third in the league with six sacrifice bunts. Just catch the ball with the end of the bat. Mm. Strikeout. Kind of figured he was going to get that hook. You, know, you kind of, as a pitcher, you kind of accept the fact that you're going to give up that sacrifice. You throw fastballs. But once you get the two strikes, then you know, okay, I'm not going to let him move the runner over. I'm going to give him my best strikeout pitch and and wipe him out. And that's what Nola did there. Brings up Adam Frazier with the runner at first and one out. In the air to center. Herrera. Two outs. We'll bring up Josh Harrison. Get your tickets to see the Buccos now through Thursday, and the Pirates will pay all service fees. Don't miss out on Zimbelli fireworks, free shirt Saturdays, kids' days, fan jam featuring Chicago. Every game for the rest of the season. To get your tickets, go to pirates.com slash no fees. Once again, get your tickets. See the Pirates do that now through Thursday, and the Pirates will pay all service fees. Young Bucko fans watching Josh Harrison now. Hey, hey, over his last 11. The strikeout in the first. Line to left. And the catch made by Nava. 2 nothing Phillies head to the bottom of the third. League Baseball All-Star team and after he was appointed he discussed how he went from five years ago being a fringe roster player to today a two-time All-Star. Believe in myself not, not not surprising to me um just staying the course and knowing that you know it's a tough game but you got to enjoy it and anything can happen and knowing that anytime I'm out on that field I don't take it for granted I play with a lot of passion have fun and you know try to help my team every night. And certainly he's been able to do that. Now he did say, Greg and Bob, that he will be taking both his infield and outfield gloves for the game to be played next Tuesday in Miami. But when you look at Josh Harrison's story, and you guys know this as good as anyone, this guy was a question mark whether he was even going to make a roster. Then in 2014, as a super utility guy all over the field, he finds himself in Minnesota at the Midsummer Classic. One of the best stories the Pirates have seen in decades, undoubtedly.
That's for sure. Josh Harrison, an All-Star in 2014. So Daniel Nava takes the strike. Hey Greg, I think I've told you this story about you maybe even remember hearing me interviewing for a pregame radio. Uh, I think it was his rookie year. Um, he had had a got to play a couple games in a row. Remember he'd be in left field, oh, right yeah. field, he all over the place, and, and he'd do something to make you notice the diving catches in the corner of the field. They always something. So I, I had interviewed him for a, a pregame for radio about how good he had been playing. You know, part time work, you know, pinch hitting, trying to get things going, coming into a ball game late, that that sort of stuff. And and I mentioned to him that there's been some players that had real great long careers as utility guys that uh, you know did a great job throughout their careers. You don't have to be an everyday player to you know to be extremely valuable. And I think I talked about Manny Moda, the guy I, I brought up to him, and and in a very polite way, he kind of said, "Yes, I know that, but." That's not what I'm going to be. I'm going to be an everyday player. I mean, just like, what do you, you know? Yeah. Why are you telling me this? Right, right. You know? But he did, you know. He did, just, it's as, just a fact. As always, yeah. he's very, you know, you know, you know, he's very polite. And, but he just set me right, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay, you know. And I'm like, well, this young guy is full of confidence, that's for sure, you know. But probably going to be a utility guy. Well, I was wrong. All that confidence uh, not only got him into the the lineup on a every single day basis. It, he's a very important part of that lineup. He's always been up near the top. Uh, you know, just getting things started, always stirring things up, and uh, now he's uh, a two-time All-Star. Pretty special. Maybe someday, uh, Adam Frazier, uh, starting out that that role to a degree. Josh Bell makes the play and the ball hit by Nava. They bring up Freddie Galvis. Pirates tweeted out a video. They captured the moment. Ben Hurdle announces. The one all star is Josh Harrison. And the rest of the team congratulating Jay Hay. They found out yesterday. And the other remarkable thing about it is, you well know, Bob, he wasn't a, a throw in to the trade when he was acquired from the Chicago Cubs. At the end, it was a deadline deal in 2009. But he was almost, to a degree, an afterthought because the Pirates were acquire, acquiring two pitchers that they thought might really help one in the rotation, maybe both. Certainly would help the pitching staff, but neither could stay healthy. Kevin Hart, Jose Escanio. They were excited about that when they traded Tom Gorzolani and John Grabo. And most baseball people figured that if they saw Harrison in the big leagues down the road, he would be kind of an extra man, utility type player. Three and one on Galvis and the Fanatic. A fixture here for many years as Galvis drops down the bunt. Nova bare hands and a nice back up there by Jay Hay. And throw in the dirt that Belt can't handle. It'll go as a hit for Galvis. A good throw from, no, uh, from Ivan Nova would get Galvis, but they're going to give him a base hit. Yeah, I think that uh, you got to give a hit when a pitcher goes like that. I was wrong the other day, though. I, I can't remember now what the play was, but I said pitchers very seldom ever get fielding errors. And there was a play, I don't know if you remember what it was, Greg, and at first they gave a hit and they changed it to an error. Do you remember that? It was a just a, a nice little bouncer yeah. kind of back to the mound. I can't remember which one of our pitchers. Uh, didn't get it. We're not going to get this one either. 
Line drive home run for Michael Franco, his 11th. It's 4 0 Philadelphia. This is a, like a tomahawk, or I guess on uh, Game of Thrones night, this is a an overhead slash with a broadsword. High pitch and look at him go after it. Ball's almost uh, shoulder high. And it didn't get very high, much, much higher than that. He lined it out. Line drive home run, 11 now for him. Two, two run homers in the ball game for the Phillies. Joseph with the second out. He's over two, but the top of the order, Nava, Galvis, Franco, causing problems for Ivan Nova. Freddie Galvis set up this inning with that bunt single. And it brings up Nick Williams. Playing in just his fourth big league game, Michael Franco. 25 home runs last year to lead the team in 88 RBIs. Now with 11 homers, 42 ribbies. Nick Williams came over from Texas. Former second rounder five years ago. Got him the Cole Hamels deal along with a handful of others. July of 2015. He was hitting 280 with 15 homers at Triple A. Uh, Mercer going to come around and get him. Bunt hit home run. Two more in for the Phillies, up four after three innings. Game and Andrew McCutcheon earlier today was named National League Base, uh, excuse me, Major League Baseball's National League Player of the Month for the month of June. He was fantastic, and earlier he discussed what led to him winning that award. Just uh, having the first off the belief that um, I was going to get out of where I was and um, just put forth the work and the effort, um, just pre the preparation, the consistency of that, and uh, you know having some good results from it. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, that, that's what led to it and um, just being really consistent. 
The fifth time Andrew McCutcheon has won such an award in his career with the Pittsburgh Pirates and Greg and Bob. What's pretty impressive, we talked a moment ago about Josh Harrison and his story, but how about Andrew McCutcheon through two months of the season was batting just 200. He identified a flaw in his swing. He said, hey, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to work very hard at it. I'm a little bit too rotational on my swing. He said, but I'm going to see results. This is going to be different than it was last year. And boom, here he is a month later, the best player in the National League in the month of June. Yeah, what a what a month. In terms of uh, the OPS on base plus slugging. Only two other Pirates since 1968. See the last three months. Since 1968 have had a higher OPS in the month of June. Matt Stairs. In 2003. And Willie Stargell in 1978. Only those two players had higher. OPS's than. Andrew McCutcheon on base. 505 slugging 689. I know Stairs never worried about being rotational. Or being on base. <laughs> remember or not what, for long. Do, do he just was a swing. Do you remember what he used to say about his approach? Yes. Now he's the hitting coach for these guys. <laughs> his approach when I asked about a hitting was every single at bat, every pitch, I'm trying to hit the ball into the Allegheny River. <laughs> that was his quote. Pretty simple approach. Yeah. And a fly out to center. Herrera makes the routine play one away in the fourth. And Nola has given up a walk and a man reached on an air so far. No hits against him. One out into the fourth. Here's Josh Bell. Time to crack that scoreboard right here. They're hitting them out. We need to follow suit. Yep. And to left. Toward the track. Not enough. Two outs. Hey, speaking of home runs, crush home runs and dominate in your very own derby competition in the official MLB.com home run derby game on the App Store and Google Play. Swing for the fences against more than 10 million players from around the world as your favorite Derby All Star. Download Home Run Derby for free today. It's been pretty routine here for Aaron Nola. Young fan says, let's get her going here, boys. He would really be excited if. Get a nice upper body work. Yeah, out, yeah, he is. <laughs> That's the rally railing. He's on. I could try that. I think that would help me out. Is that a Game of Thrones thing? No, that's oh. trying to get in shape. Oh. Oh and two on David Freeze. Two outs, nobody on. Freeze's last homer came in Baltimore June the sixth. Ivan Nova down four. Need somebody to get a hit. Yeah, could take care of. Get that out of the way. Yeah, just you know, maybe that. Get Nola in a stretch. Get a couple of hits. Put a little pressure on him. They're on cruise control right now. Make him work at least. Again, the last time out in Seattle, seven innings, couple of runs. In fact, back to back. Seven inning performances against the Cardinals here on June 22nd. He went seven, gave up just four hits against the Redbirds. Another foul for David Free, so he is trying to make Nola work. 
referees and uh, Clint Hurdle had a recent discussion that referees would not be out there every single night. But, uh, it was important that in Clint Hurdle's mind, he get plenty of days off. And still one and two. Pirates took two of three from Tampa Bay and then were swept by the San Francisco Giants. Ready Galvis. On to Joseph. Aaron Nola still has not allowed a hit. He's not discouraged. Time for the Toyota all-wheel drive RAV 4th inning. Toyota, what drives you? It is a 4-0 ball game here in Philadelphia. A couple of legends right there. I'll say. Harry Callis, broadcast booth. Richie Ashburn, broadcast booth. Harry and Whitey, longtime Hall of Fame broadcast team. The statue of Harry up by Harry the K's. Beyond left field. Up Ashburn Alley. Two of the more popular figures not uh, just involving the Phillies but in this city over many many years. Think, uh, Pete Toma used to work with uh, Mary and Whitey. I didn't know Pete was that old. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Just Pete, no, not that Pete, old. Pete's I mean, he's older than I thought. I guess he looks a lot younger. Must be it. <laughs> Harry the K's. What are the uh, football highlights? That sure, NFL Harry films. Do yeah. man was that, that, that was awesome. NFL films based in Philadelphia. Harry, uh, I don't know if he took over directly for John Facenda. I think there was an interim. Voiceover man, but uh, Harry for a lot of years did uh, those highlights. He and Richie were great, great friends. Fly ball to left, and Frazier will make the catch to retire Andres Blanco. Still here, with Harry say, "Hey, Whirly." He's the only one who's ever told me oh, that. Yeah. Your nickname was Whirly Bird, but you're, he's the only one that called you. Yeah, that. It was t for him that was what it yeah. was. But and uh, so he, every time I'd come in, either here at Veterans Stadium or here, it was always 
Morley. Always never the only one that called you that. The only person I ever uh, remember. So That's what happens with a nickname. Announcer gives you a nickname, it sticks. Yep. Part of that 1980 World Series team. You'll see uh, some of those older uniforms uh, sprinkled around, uh, powder blue or the wine color. Yeah. There, you there go. we go. There's the old colors. And that's popped up to left. That was in the days where there were some good wars between the Pirates and the Phillies. And they resided in the same division, the National League East. Mike Schmidt, of course, or as Harry would call him, Michael Jack Schmidt. Go. That's it. Yeah, the late 70s, the Phillies and the Pirates it dominated the division. Traded the World uh, Championship. Kept it in the 79 state. and 80. Teak pointed out something to me a couple of years ago that never really thought of, but since then, kind of thought, kind of neat. He ended this, he got the last out of the 79. World Series. I get the first out of the eighth. <laughs> that is cool. That, that is neat. That I hadn't funny. thought about that. Uh, yeah, I never. When that, my mind, he brought that up. Well, so game one was in Philadelphia, then, right, yeah. against the Royals. Because back then they used to flip flop home field. Yeah, um, yeah, it was just back and forth. In '79, it was forth. the American League, so the Orioles had four games. Uh, in the following year, 1980, the National League, in this case the Phillies, had home field. And the All-Star Game for several years, brainchild of uh, then Commissioner Bud Selig, to try and make it a little more meaningful. He thought that uh, maybe if the leagues played for home field advantage in the World Series, uh, that really didn't come to pass necessarily. So this year they abandoned that, and home field will go to the team with the best record. After uh, the uh, championship series, whoever owns the best record will get the home field. So it'll be a bit of a, a scramble for traveling secretaries and travel agents, as uh, you won't know till the very end of the playoffs before the World Series who's going to have home field. One, two, three. Couple fly balls, ground out, bucks down four. After four.
Pirates autograph and memorabilia show going to be on Saturday July 15th at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. See your favorite past and present buckos including Andrew McCutcheon Gregory Polanco Francisco Cervelli Steve Blass and many more. Admission is free for signing schedule pricing and to order autograph tickets go to pirates.com huntauctions.com that's pirates.huntauctions.com hope that doesn't confuse you. Does no it, I'm not confused it, at all. No. no. Pirates.huntauctions.com. Pirates. Dot. Yeah. Do you write DOT or do you just put no, a No, come period? on, you know better than that. <laughs> come on, yeah, Steve. A little while ago, we had uh, Pirates video coordinator's son on camera, Brennan Roach, on the rally railing. Let's see if it doesn't uh, work out here. His wife, Heather, there is young Brennan. Heather Roach, I think uh, sisters Ella and Lily are also on hand. Roach, you made a nice call on that uh, replay yesterday, the game. Oh, the tag at yeah. the Bell, yeah. yeah. That was a well, we were on the radio closer. side. Uh, I wish that Pete and Adam and Jason and Tyler and everybody could have heard uh, how we were speaking so glowingly about the root sports production because I contend that that play doesn't get overturned anywhere except Pittsburgh and that's no disrespect to anybody for example here we got a great crew in Philly but and all the stuff that we have in at PNC Park at our disposal now oh, come on now don't be now these guys know we love these guys uh, I don't but know. they're not we're Pittsburgh hey, I'm sudden, sorry. now we're getting some looks up back I'm here. sorry it's it's not home Next best thing. Greg Brown. And, and, though, and though Bobby. It's Greg Brown. Bobby that. we would nothing against Zach but you want to go back with us to Pittsburgh Bobby. All right. Bobby Anderson. It's not me. I right hear this guy. No I, it. that's right. It's uh, Philadelphia's his home. <laughs> I'm talking Pittsburgh. They were. They are so good. And they're really good here. And that's a pretty good play for Blanco. Especially uh, considering that we don't have a hit yet. Yeah. Now they'll remember that if this goes much further. Wow, how about that? It keeps knocked it down and stays that close to him. Pretty nice play. That's more than a redeemer for that error he made earlier. And now Cervelli. Good curveball again. Ball and a strike on Cervelli. Back off the disabled list today. I mentioned that he had been placed on the 10 day DL recently. That's because after the 7 day DL is up for the concussion, you're not activated by then, then you automatically go on the 10 day DL. Ball two strikes. It should be routine. Is two outs. Phillies though were seven one winners in New York yesterday and what how about this bizarre looking play. Center fielder Aaron Altair watch this ball roll up his back behind him makes the catch and we'll get a double play. Crazy. Well, if you're the base runner, could you understand how you got yeah, held up? Yeah. You're like, he's caught that? No way. Aaron Altair not in the lineup tonight.
strike on Mercer. There's Mickey Morandini next to him. First base coach and former Philly and one of Harry Callis's favorite names to call. And Jordy Mercer has the first hit of the game for the Pirates. Oh, nice little job there by the ball girl to skip out of the way. A double for Mercer. Nice ovation from the crowd. For Nola. That's a good way to break it up. When you have a situation like that, you want to be clean, and that certainly was clean. Jumped on this with a line drive. That ball girl, uh, Greg, I think she thought that this line drive was going to go down in the corner. Just past Oh, it hit his glove, didn't it? Just off his glove. And then it jumped right out at her. She had moved to get out of the way of where she thought the ball was going. She did a great job. Perfect time for Nova to pick up his first RBI. She's going to get out of the way because she thinks the ball's going and then right at her feet. Oh, man. Now, these ball girls here in Philadelphia, they do a great job, but the ones we have in Pittsburgh, they are outstanding. I knew that, you know, I knew that was coming. I tell you, we have worked way too long together, just <laughs> waiting. You saw that one coming? Oh. <laughs> Talk about being teed up. A little gutsy call there from Bobby. One ball, two strikes. As Nola looks to get out of it, facing Nova. Set along a very happy 75th wedding anniversary. Don and Mary Hepler. Big Pirates fans watching. Ball two strikes the count. A two two count. Ron Nova has one hit in 33 at bats. He has struck out 22 times. Including his last at bat, where he failed to bunt Mercer to second. And down on strikes he goes. And that breaking ball definitely a equalizer for Nolan. Mercer breaks up the no hit bid, but the Pirates still being blanked for zip.
Sports Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Colorado and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! 4 0. Phillies. In the bottom half of the fifth here in Philadelphia. Day Automotive this day in Pirates history. This day, 1987. Pirates beat the Dodgers 6 0. Bobby Bow. First Pirates a homer from each side of the plate in the same game. Three run homer off Fernando Valenzuela batting right handed and then a solo shot off Ken Howe batting left handed in the seventh. Rick Russell goes the distance on a five hitter but a big day for Bobby Bonilla July 3rd 1987. Mets fans celebrating Bobby Bonilla Day on Saturday. Every July 1st. Bobby Bonilla is paid one point one nine million dollars through the year twenty thirty five <laughs> part of the deal that uh, the Mets had worked out when they released him before the two thousand season so happy Bobby Bonilla day July first that's a pretty nice uh, pension eh? well, I'd say Wow. Nothing like that deferred money. Mm -hmm. Sign one of those big contracts. Yeah. Pitcher Aaron Nola at the plate. Little tapper foul. Ooh. Yeah, ah. I was, was going to say there's at first I thought he said he was it was a foul ball and that ball hit hit him well out in front of the plate or in the, on top of the plate. You could hear Chad Fairchild bark that all the way up here. Nola is out. That will go to that Francisco ball's Cervelli. Definitely in fair territory. He doesn't know where it's at and he runs right into it. The plate is a anything over the plate's a fair ball. And that hit him actually it looked like a little in front of the plate. Daniel Nava singled and scored on the Galvis home run of the first, bounced out in the third. Aaron Nola back to the dugout. Four runs, six hits off of Ivan Nova. Ball and two strikes. Nava now 34 years old. He had signed as a non drafted free agent by the Boston Red Sox back in 2008 out of Santa Clara University and made his major league debut against the Phillies as a member of the Red Sox in an interleague game June 12, 2010. And the first hit in the big leagues he had, first plate appearance, was a grand slam off Joe Blanton. Two and two. Fourth player in Major League history. So he hit a home run, a grand slam, that is, his first Major League plate appearance. night well, I couldn't get any further behind that back line of the batter's box could he mm -hmm. 
three and two. Just trying to get an edge. It's not cheating if they let you get away with it. Nava just a 197 career batting average here at Citizens Bank on deck Freddie Galvis who's homered and bunted for a hit. And a walk. Here's who's bringing the lumber brought to you by Yellowwood. Freddie Galvis coming to the plate homered after the Nava single in the first. Number eight on the season. And after a bunt hit by Galvis in the third, Michael Franco in his 11th of the year. Two home runs tonight for the Phillies. Galvis hit 20 last year. Drives this to center field. 409 back there. Two outs. Gonna go. That's all only for the big boys out that direction. You gotta get every bit of it to hit a home run in that spot. What is that, Craig? It is Game of Thrones night. Oh, what is, is it? A dragon? Is that what it is? A yes. Dragon? Oh, I get it. Okay, it's a dragon. No, it's not. And a the dragon. turtle. You've it's got the a dragon. It looks like a polywog. You got Bessie the. That's a polywog. A dragon, Game of Thrones. Come on, turtle, a polywog, and a, what, what was the other thing? <laughs> a duck. They're definitely staying downstairs after that home run. They tomahawked out of here. His first two strikes down at the knees. Beautiful curveball. Just settles right there. That's the 0-2 curve in the dirt. That's the one that. You want to bounce it a little bit closer to the glove than that, but you do want the ball to hit the dirt. Ideally, right exactly in front of the catcher, beyond home plate. And you might get a check swing or chase on it. Stolen one base. Almost got a piece of Franco. You're going to come upstairs, going to leave the knees, put it on the hands. Nova did. Way 
goes here. Tries to go right back down and away. Upset that he didn't hit the spot. Now he doesn't miss by a whole lot here. He's just trying to pick off that bottom edge of the strike zone on the outside corner. And what he missed it by just an, an inch. He was on the plate, just a smidgen low. Game of inches. And he gets him. His first strikeout tonight. Pirates trail by four. Phillies lead. Uh, what's pretty incredible about that? That's the first one's a ton of runs. It's the third time that Locke has given up that many runs in his career. Eleven, man. He gave up eleven on June 9, 2016, and on April 20th last year. And that will put a huge hurting on his earned run average. He didn't have many in, in, uh, innings either to cushion that blow because he was. On the DL for the first two months of the season. So that's, that's sixth be tough. start, I believe it is. So his ERA now is 8-16 for Jeff Locke as the Cardinals are clobbering the Marlins 11 nothing. Razor well, bounces out. Right now the Pirates aren't clobbering much of anything. No lies. Absolutely dominating us to this point. Just the one base hit by Mercer. See the first pitch strikes. That'll uh, help out a lot. Get ahead. Just one hit the Mercer double. Just a little bit of a tail brought it back to the strike zone. The second, I'm sorry, Bob. Nice little movement on it. It's going to correct that the second time that Locke has given up 11 in his career. Oh, a little bit of trouble for Blanco keeping that ball in the glove, but uh, plenty of time to get Harrison. Two outs for Nola. Pretty routine for Aaron Nola here. 
Very comfortable. For the starter of the Phillies Pirates have not really. Uh, made him work haven't hit a lot of balls hard David Freeze I think had the longest at bat in the fourth. Curveball's been pretty good tonight, haven't it? There's a strike one hook. Pitch count very much in order for Aaron Nola. His 12th start of the year. Coming off a couple of really good ones against the Cardinals and Mariners. That's hit hard by McCutcheon. He'll pick up a double. Second double of the game for the Pirates and for Andrew McCutcheon. He is now in scoring position for Josh Bell. He threw that uh, strike one curveball and, and, and then came back with the same pitch in the same spot a pitch later. And you really can't just kind of throw that spinner up there like that two times. First time somebody's going to take it, okay. But you know now they're deeper into the count. Touch in this case, they're going to get into more of a defensive approach because you started them off with a breaking ball for strike one, and so now you just spin that one up on the inside of the corner, and they're going to be all over it. That's what Cutch was. Now Josh Bell. He's had a couple of good at bats a line out to right his first inning at bat and a ball to the warning track and left in the fourth so. This might be the one the at bat here. He cracks the bell. Looks like he's got a shorter bat to me. I, I mean this at bat. No the, the bat itself looks shorter tonight. Oh, tonight. Not this at bat the all three ABs. Uh, huh? Yeah I don't know why. I mean. It just I noticed that when he, when he first went up there now it, how can I tell if it's you know if maybe he was using the 35 maybe this one's a 34 I don't know or I could just be seeing things but does it look like it to it you could be and I'm wondering if it's the tape that's uh, kind of up the barrel a more optical illusion maybe could, I don't know could be it could it could be a shorter bat though you might be right you know guys can go go to a, a little bit shorter bat trying to get a little bit more balance to it a little bit more bat control. Yeah. Ask him tomorrow if that's the case, or we're just saying things. Yeah, you might be right. I don't think he's choking up at all on this that, one. Doesn't it look kind of short? Yep. Strikes out number six for Nola.
trail 4 nothing. Well, Jordy Mercer gave some praise to his all-star teammate Josh Harrison, but he also told a story about when the two came up through the system together. Well, I mean, I've played with him since A-ball, and, and we were on the same Lynchburg team together back in 2009, and that's when we first traded for him, and he came over, and he lived in my living room. And so uh, we've been together for quite a long time now, and, um, you know, so I know what type of guy he is, and what type of person he is, what type of player he is, and um, I think everybody now is just uh, realizing, you know, that he's, he's pretty special. Pretty cool story as Jordy Mercer and Josh Harrison, the best of friends, their wives and children are all very close friends, spending all that time in the family room together. But who knew Josh Harrison living in Jordy Mercer's living room in single A. None of us knew that one. That was a while ago, huh? It's just taken for a ball. There they are, Jay Hay and Jordy. Double play partners. Lynchburg back in 09. Tommy Joseph 0 for 2, 6th inning, Pirates trailing 4 0. Looking like this will be Nova's last, could be Nova's last inning. One out. Calling all deadheads. Visit PNC Park Friday, July 14th for Grateful Dead Night. Arrive early, listen to a tribute band on Federal Street. Catch the Pirates and Cardinals at 705. First 1,000 tickets purchased will get an official Pirates Grateful Dead t-shirt. Get your tickets at pirates.com slash Grateful Dead. Get you one of those, Bob. Those shirts. Sure, Greg. You're a big deadhead fan. Not really. Steve might be. That's a gap shot. Touching a nice job getting to it, but a double for Nick Williams, his fifth hit in the big leagues. Showing some uh, pretty good speed. When you're up for nothing. Uh, really take some chances out there and uh, even though this ball was cut off and couldn't really come close to getting to the warning track. Still turned it into a double. His first double in the major leagues. The Phillies are trying to find some answers uh, for the next couple of years. Obviously this year is uh, all about looking at players and figuring out who's going to be part of the uh, future with this club. Going to try not to lose 100 games. Seventy one and ninety one last year the Phillies. Who have won three of their last five after dropping 16 of their last 19. Flying off <clears throat> on the bat on that swing. Blanca has had a hard time. Holding on to the baseball a couple times. The bat. And Jay Hay. Retires Blanco. Nick Williams to third. Two outs. Nova will face Lububel Herrera. As one of the seven Phillies hits. Again, a two run homer for Freddie Galvis in the first, a two run homer for Michael Franco in the third. And 
Wade LeBlanc loosens in the Pirates bullpen. And Williams got that double. They got everybody stirring in that bullpen. That time of the game. Your starter. Get somebody in scoring position. You know that phone's going to ring. Nobody starts guessing. Is it going to be me? Not everybody. Oh. Rivero didn't think it might be him. Yeah. But there's always like you know, two or three guys that the phone could be ringing for in the middle part of the game. Definitely see a drilling going, trying to figure out what name is going to be hollered out. Mercer guns to Bell for the final out. And we move to the seventh inning. Four nothing Phillies. The seventh. Three more shots for the Pirates. Check out some Point Park University tweets. Some photos here from Philly. Thanks to Erica. You can uh, send your photos to us as well. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Ball for the Bucko bullpen there. Leslie. And again, hashtag Bucks Booth. I think there's the only uh, booth in the league that has an elevator, or not booth, the uh, bullpen. Hmm. Very Probably, high, yeah. Very high bullpen. It's easy to get a ball up into the upper deck from there. The other way for Freeze, and he starts off the inning with a base hit. David Freeze singles to right. Third hit for the Pirates, first for Freeze. And it's the second, well, make it the third time the Pirates have had their leadoff man aboard. Right here, right here. Fastball talking about earlier and went right right toward the middle of the plate. Six plus for Nola, 81 pitches. Only been one base on ball with those three hits. Not many base runners. That was the leadoff walk to Frazier to begin the ball game. Blanco hit that. Mercer. And Mercer doubled. McCutcheon doubled last inning and now freeze the base runners for the Pirates. 
Blanco was retired on a nice play by Andres Blanco in the fifth. Nola trying to win his sixth game. We mentioned the Phillies through some real struggles, lose, lost 16 of 19, but they've taken three of their last five. You know, Greg, uh, do you think if there was any way to look back, you think there's more pickoff throws now than there were, say, 20, 30 years ago? What made me think of that is it's four nothing late in the ball game. Freeze doesn't steal bases, and they have a pickoff throw. And I, I, I think I'm looking at things nowadays as to why are the games so long. I thought about that when uh, they, when uh, Ivan Nova threw over, was it last inning, to first base with uh, Daniel Nava at the plate, leading four nothing. Nava has one stolen base attempt. You know, he wasn't going anywhere, but yeah, I, my guess would be yeah, Bob. Wouldn't well, you think? Well, I, I, the, and the reason why it might be is nowadays all the pickoff throws, that's all called from the bench. It's not the yeah. pitchers doing it on their own. I don't wonder if that leads to more pickoff throws than in, in the old days, where it's like okay, four nothing lead. Um, you know, slate the game. Fewer stolen bases Kyle these did. days too, then because of that, maybe, huh? Yeah, could be. Lifted. Now territory. Fair That's ball. a fair ball. Freeze into second base, and he's safe, and the ball clips. Freeze, and maybe he got a piece of Galvis. That looked like. Three Keystone cops, and now Todd Thompson going to check on freeze, and out comes Pete McCannon and a Phil's trainer to check on Galvis. That's as strange a base hit as you're going to see. And <laughs> Joey Cora checking <laughs> on freeze. <laughs> well, I, did freeze get hit with the throw? Is that what I don't know I think so but I'm not sure. And I, I don't know whether his knee his head collided then with the. Uh, Galvis's knee. Yeah okay there he got hit. Not sure what happened with Galvis maybe rolled an ankle. This is crazy watch uh, Blanco. Joseph is the first baseman. There's Blanco. That is crazy. How about Blanco covering his head up? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, don't hit me. See, he covered his head up. He thought the ball was going to hit him in the head. He covered his head up. Freeze watching the play. Throw hits him and now is turns his ankle a bit. Oh, he's fine. First and second for Francisco Cervelli. Oh. And nobody out. I mean, here it is. They just open the door of opportunity for us. We're gonna make a move here. Up the middle. And now Blanco makes a fine play to rob Cervelli and get it out at second. Blanco's having a very odd game, isn't he? Adventurous. He has made a couple of uh, sparklers and then a couple other ones, not so much. <laughs> that was a nice one. He throw this ball right between his legs. And then. Nice pointing. Hey, don't forget runner to third. Turn around. Ah. 
Jordy Mercer has reached on an error and doubled. Pirates down four. First and third, one out. John Jaso out on deck. Casio has joined Wade LeBlanc. <laughs> That's been his pitch. That curveball. And he has put this pitch where he wants to, down and away. We're not doing anything with it. I mean, look at the numbers though. Nobody in the league really has done much with that at all. The hook anyway. Strikes out Mercer. Seven K's for Nola. The league hitting just 215 off his curveball this season. There it is again. Nice little cluster. Allegheny Health Network Super Mo showing you the spin on that hook. Bob McClure, pitching coach, out to talk. Scouting report on Jaso. On Jaso, who hit the uh, home run. In the eighth inning, made it a 5 3 ball game off the lefty of the Giants, Stephen Okert. Second career home run off a left hander. His first was his very first Major League homer off rookie Romero back in 2010. This home run made it 5 3, part of a two hit day for Jaso. And he very well have had four hits had it not been for Hunter Pence, making one above average and one spectacular catch on John Jaso. Two pinch hit home runs this year, five in his career. Only Von Nova is on the hook. He gets back to throwing at least six innings, but he gave up four runs, a couple of two run homers. Seven hits, one walk, one strikeout. John Jaso, that's for Nova. David Freeze let off the inning with a base hit to right. Francisco Cervelli reached on the fielder's choice. One ball and one strike on Jaso. Hitting 375 as a pinch hitter. Up there. Okay, so up front. Oh. Interesting the Frazier. way he's working him here with the the types of pitches it, it makes me think okay is he doing that with the curveball especially because that's his best pitch today or they just had the little conversation about the scattering report is that why they're pitching the way they are another change up two change ups so does the scattering report say throwing change ups. Mm -hmm. He hasn't thrown that many changeups no. today, has he? No. 
Oh, it's only some two and yeah. three pitches. That's the curveball again. At Nishek, named the Phillies All Star representative yesterday. Second time he'll go to an All Star game. Just gets a piece of it, stays three and two. Still three and two as Aaron Nola looks to finish off Jaso and finish up his night. He's due up second in the bottom of this seventh inning. He gets him. Change up. His eighth strikeout. Liking the Pirates on four hits. scoreboard for nothing Phillies they lead the Pirates at the seventh inning stretch well Trevor Williams put a nice uh, game on the board yesterday six innings gave up just two runs and tomorrow he's going to take your questions on Twitter Tuesday send in your questions for Trevor using the hashtag Bucks Tuesday and one thing we like to do Greg and Bob make it a little bit of a July 4th theme so ask him about maybe his favorite barbecues favorite food that he could eat at a barbecue we're gonna have a little fun on July 4th tomorrow on Twitter Tuesday with Trevor Williams starting pitcher for the Buccos the hashtag it's Bucks Tuesday. Send him in early and send him in often, and we'll get to him, guys. Hashtag Bucks Tuesday. So look forward to that. For game two of the series, Wade LeBlanc comes on after Von Nova goes the first six, gives up four runs on seven hits. Wade's numbers on the season. Uh, one of the things that uh, you don't see a whole lot of from relievers nowadays, but with Wade, a lot more innings pitched than games. He's been out there a few times uh, for extended periods this year. This is Cameron Rupp on deck. Aaron Altair to bat for Aaron Nola. Rupp has popped up and bounced out. There's Altair.
He had a play. Phillies, a two run homer from Freddie Galvis in the first. Michael Franco had a two run homer in the third. That has been the scoring. Strike three called. So that uh, slow strikeout call. And I don't hear anything. I don't hear him barking a thing, <laughs> by the way. Right downstairs, we're going to hear something. Oh, yeah. Do you hear something? Yeah, you don't hear it? No. Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm going to show you. You, you. you can definitely hear it. If they do it again, you'll hear it. Really? You, if, you, I can't believe you didn't no, hear it. No, I couldn't. I could hear the glove pop the mitt. I can hear that. I can hear that strike call. Listen again. All right. Nothing. Did you hear that? I heard a whisper. Well, I didn't say it was going to be real loud. Oh. That's why you didn't hear it the first time. Sound a lot like you. Altair lines out to left. Check out our Nissan Road Ahead. Game two of the four game series. Jameson Tyone against Mark Leiter Jr. Wednesday, it's Garrett Cole. Chad Cool on Thursday. Tomorrow, join you at 3.30. A special 4th of July Pirates-Phillies matchup. This will be just the uh, fourth time in the Pirates' 131-year history that they've actually played in Philadelphia on the 4th of July. Pretty neat. City of brotherly love. The uniforms that they... Uh they were nowadays. They're pretty much Fourth of July uniforms to begin with. Other than the socks, you don't really notice much. A lot of red, white, and blue around here for the Phillies. Every day. All teams throughout baseball are going to be wearing these uh, specially designed uniforms now for. Tomorrow will be a fourth straight game. Josh Bell is going to take a trip with uh, Robbie tomorrow morning to the Liberty Bell. I'll have that for you tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say. All knocked down by Freeze. And one, two, three. Go the Phillies. Head to the eight. Fox trail by four.
Sports is brought to you by Barrel. With express service, you're in and out in no time. Visit BarrelService.com to find a location near you. And by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! 4-0 here in Philadelphia. On the UPFC scoreboard. Game one of four. The Cross State rivals. What a job by Aaron Nola. Seven innings of four hit. Shutout ball. One walk, eight strikeouts. McWilliams moves from right field to left field. Aaron Altair stays in the game to play right. And veteran Joaquin Benoit will pitch the eighth and he is placed in the top spot of the order. Faces Adam Frazier. Not many hits, but he will walk a couple of 15 walks and 32 innings. So don't swing if the first thing comes your way, especially since you're down four to nothing. Wouldn't hurt to take a strike no matter what. There's a strike. Now you can swing. Frazier started this ball game off with a walk. One out later, he stole second base, but. Nola after striking out Josh Harrison swinging got uh, McCutcheon looking and Josh Bell lined out. Two balls two strikes Josh Harrison Andrew McCutcheon follow. Benoit in three weeks will turn 40. Still getting it up there. Mid 90s. Came to the big leagues as a starting pitcher with the Texas Rangers. Pitched for Tampa Bay, was a closer for the Tigers four years ago, a couple years with the Padres. Last year pitched in Seattle and Toronto. Signed as a free agent in December. Now with the Phillies. Three and two. Benoit has been particularly tough against right handed hitters this season. So Harrison and McCutcheon will be tested. Frazier will be retired. Easy for Blanco. Some more Point Park University tweets and some uh, Instagram photos, actually. We see some siblings on hand here in Philly. And took her man to his first Phillies Pirates game. A lot of uh, Pirates jerseys, t shirts. In the crowd, as always, and they're often seated with friends, relatives, Philly fans next to them. They get along just fine. All Pennsylvanians, great. Yep. Okay, uh, even like people from Mechanicsburg. Mm -hmm. The center. 
The All Star Josh Harrison is uh, 0 for 4 tonight. Line to the warning track in the third inning. We mentioned that uh, this is the first time the Pirates have been in Philadelphia for the 4th of July since 1963. We did one this day in Pirates history earlier involving Bobby Bonilla. On this day in 1963, the Pirates had just beaten the Phillies the night before and had an off day on July 3rd, 1963, anticipating a double header on the 4th of July the following day. But it was on the off day that it was announced that Bill Mazeroski would not be able to play. In the 63 All Star game, he was the leading vote getter among second basemen, but he had a leg injury, hadn't played for the Pirates since mid June. So the National League manager, Giant skipper Alvin Dark, named Larry Jackson of the Cubs as the replacement. It had been reported that Gene Mock, the manager of the Phillies, was so upset that they had lost a close game the night before to the Pirates that he threw a bat. Through a clubhouse door by his office, and he said that was not true. He said what he did do is pick up his chair and throw it through the door. It wasn't a bat. So there you go. I've always wondered about that story. If it was a bat or a chair. It, it's it was just kind of funny. He was that was Gene Mock. He was, he, he was angry at the the, the uh, at the door apparently. No, he was angry at the false reporting, the fake news. Oh, okay. He wanted to set the record straight. Of course, that was the year before the Phillies had the great collapse in 1964. They were on their way to winning a National League pennant when they. Uh, Totally collapsed at a six and a half game lead with 12 to play, and they'd end up finishing in a tie for second behind St. Louis. Must have been throwing some stuff that year. It's one of those uh, collapses he always gets talked about. Bring up that sort of thing. Well, this guy kept his composure through. Uh, all his trials and tribulations last year, Andrew McCutcheon, and the start of a slow season this year. And looks like the McCutcheon of old picking up the Player of the Month award for June. Pops up. Short stop. And the Pirates go down one, two, three. They're being blanked here by the Phillies. Joaquin Benoit, one, two, three, eight. Four nothing.
Sportscast is presented by the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In the minors, Shane Boz made his professional debut for the Pirates. Their first round pick this year is uh, pitching for the Gulf Coast League Pirates. One inning, couple of strikeouts. Will Craig has been having a strong month and uh, since June the 1st with Bradenton hitting 345 playing first base drafted out of uh, Wake Forest Starling Marte went one for three and scored a run three at bats for the Marauders tonight anticipate uh, him heading to uh, Indianapolis perhaps as early as tomorrow. Freddy Galvis batting right handed now against the lefty LeBlanc. Be interesting to see what kind of effect it's going to have on the uh, lineup when Marte gets back. And who's going to hit leadoff? Frazier has been doing such a fine job there of late. This play by Josh Harrison. Excellent play. Let's take a look at it again. Came up. Not a big rush. He took a couple of steps to make that exchange. Knew he had plenty of time. One of the one of the things that I think we've always been uh, impressed with, Greg, is that no matter what position he plays at, it looks natural to him. Mm -hmm. Third, outfield, wherever they they stick him, everything he does looks like he's been playing that spot forever. He really has a good grasp on uh, not only the physical stuff. Uh, for each position, but the mental stuff, knowing in the outfield, for instance, where to throw the ball in certain scenarios to keep double plays in order, that sort of thing. Second inning of work for LeBlanc has retired the first four. Miguel Franco had the other two run homer. Galvis hit his in the first, Franco in the third. Tommy Joseph on deck. The Phillies have out hit the Pirates 7 4. Two outs. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Virus going on. Fireworks are a beautiful thing. I imagine they uh, they get a good workout around this town. This time of the summer. Is that the Jersey side of the river? Oh, hard off of uh, Chad Fairchild's mask and Francisco Cervelli. Checking with him. Oh, off his right shoulder. Yeah, it didn't hit him in the mask. Protector.
Joseph 0 for three. Well, LeBlanc, she does a great job in these scenarios, doesn't he? You get behind by a little bit and you have to have somebody come in and pitch a couple of innings. Wow. Six up, six down, head to the ninth. Four nothing. Bring you game two between the Buccos and Phillies. Jamison Tyon will start for the Pirates. It's a special holiday start time, so join us at 3:30 for Pirates pregame presented by W. B. Mason. Playing Eye of the Tiger, and we saw the Rocky statue right on cue. Iconic statue here in Philadelphia. Now Hector Nares, not a safe situation. The 28-year-old uh, from the Dominican Republic has been outstanding. 6'2", 218 pounds. Nares does lead the club with seven saves. They uh, released Jean-Marc Gomez earlier this year. He had been their closer last year. And a strike on Josh Bell, who is 0 for 3, a liner to right, a ball to the warning track and left, and a strikeout. And an 0 and 2. We did not get the crack of the bell tonight so far, have not we? yet, not yet. Not tonight. Josh Bell goes 0 for 4. Yeah, and now David Freeze. I was going to say during the uh, during the open, we were talking about Kutch and the uh, Player of the Month award and how well, when he started. Hitting it seemed like everybody started doing a little something more. We know Mercer's batting average came way up on almost about that same time, maybe even a little earlier into May a little bit, but it was a, uh, a pretty big problem in the offense at that point. And you hope it's not going to be you know a, a season of just inconsistencies where it gets okay for a while and then falls back, but Certainly feels that way currently. Yeah, it really is. It, it, uh, a series against the Giants. But it just takes one game to come out and knock the ball around the place a little bit, get back on track.
bad part is again facts of the facts that uh, they just lost three straight to the team with the second worst record in baseball and now one out away from losing their fourth straight overall in the first of this four game series the Phillies have just 14 home wins this year they're only five and 14 against the National League Central of course the Pirates won two of three against them at PNC Park earlier in the year is going to shut out the Pirates. You know, there have been some ups and downs this year, but this is uh, some kind of rut for this Bucks team. Yeah, Greg, you kind of 